Hi everyone, I am Dr. Anusha Rao, Senior Fellow in the Department of Cardiology, Narayan Hridaraya, and this is Dr. Sanjay Mahrotra, who is the Senior Most Consultant in Department of Cardiology. We are here to discuss about no the various non-communicable diseases like stroke, high blood pressure, high cholesterols, and its various effects on cardiovascular systems, and the need of change in lifestyles to prevent such non-communicable diseases. Good morning. Yeah. So, uh, what is the reason for increase in non-communicable diseases like stroke, dyslipidemia, or high blood pressure in the current scenario? So, if you look at the current status of uh, what is happening to our uh, way of life and our lifestyles, uh, the two most important things which have changed I feel is the our dietary patterns have changed and also the way we live our lives you know value of what kind of food we eat what kind of how many times we eat food and the availability of food with ease and especially the processed food along with lack of exercise lack of physical activity we have a uh, increased burden of what you call as non-communicable diseases which includes hypertension, diabetes and effect of these drugs on most important of being what you call as the cardiovascular disease which deals with the diseases of heart for example heart attack, angina and an effect of that which results in significant uh, you know mortality and morbidity of general population where there is more heart attacks, there is more uh, you know, failure of heart, which ultimately what happens after the heart attack. So the non-communicable diseases have become more and more important in the last 15 to 20 years, or maybe more, may I will say about 30 years, as, as the most important cause of, you know, health related issues in general population. So how is change in lifestyle going to help in preventing these non-communicable diseases? So what I feel is that as we have become, uh, you know, more and more prosperous and the reason for that being that our physical activities have been reduced. For example, think of an individual who is about 30 years of age now and he works in a software industry in a city like Bangalore. He gets up in the morning, maybe a bit late because he has done a late night work and he has taken a very late meal last night he maybe gets up and he prepares for, the, uh, for him to go to the office. He spends a lot of time in the traffic, which is really, really very bad in the city now. He reaches uh, his work and then he starts working with a lot of pressure on his, uh, you know, timelines. And then he eats something which is usually purchased from outside. He doesn't eat home food. He reaches home by around somewhere around nine o'clock after he has spent again some stressful time in his traffic and then he eats, eats a late meal and then he sleeps. So his physical activity is extremely sedentary and I think the important part of it is that how many times we are eating and also the most important part of our diet has become carbohydrate which I think is the main cause of disease and worsening of illness uh, or non-communicable diseases in our country. Sir, so what do you think is the most important non-communicable disease that needs to be prevented? So, as far as uh, I would say that the effect of all this uh, lot of processed food, less of natural food, diet rich in carbohydrate, diet poor in proteins, lack of physical activity and the stresses of work has resulted in causing what you call as diabetes. Diabetes means that the patient has become, person has become early diabetic and is also obese. Now, such patients who have uh, what you call, we also call it syndrome X or endocrine, uh, what you call as um, metabolic syndrome, sorry, good, prompting me for that. <laughs> metabolic syndrome where that you have obesity, central obesity, you have diabetes, you have high triglycerides, and you have um, waist hip ratio which is uh, higher. Such patients, such people which we find, I mean I find almost anybody who was above 35 years of age has central obesity in this country. I don't find young people fit and fine. They are mostly obese in the center. 
and that is where importance lies. So prevention of diabetes and prevention of obesity and I think you can probably call it first prevention of diabetes, uh, obesity which leads into prevention of hypertension as well as diabetes and thereof reduction in the prevalence of communi non-communicable diseases like which have effect on your heart, which have effect on your brain, which have effect on your kidneys, which have effect on your eyes. So these are the things we need to prevent. Yeah. What is the value of stress and lifestyle, sir? So as I said that uh, the stress is not necessarily just always, uh, you know, stress of work. Even a stress of driving a car can be stressful because, you know, I have seen people shouting inside their cars and when nobody can listen to them because they're all in air conditioned cars and there is pollution outside. So you can't open the car, you are shouting, somebody says something to you, somebody cuts in front of you, you carry the stress and it becomes worse when that person, you know, rebukes you and you remember the whole day. So the kind of stress which you go through in day to day life in every transaction with other people has become more and more. There is stress while traveling, there is stress at work, there is stress of earning more money, there is stress of competing with your fe fellows, there is jealousy in people. So all that attitude which has become along with dietary modification and change in uh, you know, eating all kinds of food which I have talked about has resulted in this. Um, and if you prevent that, obviously you're going to reduce the possibility of these non-communicable non diseases. One more thing which I would say which is making people sedentary and I'm not surprised that people would have upper neck disease also is looking at their mobile phones. Because I think if you go to any airports, any place or public, you will see people watching their mobile phones. All their heads are down and <laughs> they are watching. Don't you feel so? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think that will also cause some physical stress in terms of a neck pain, which is not going to be far. And I'm sure the orthopedics are already seeing much more people with upper neck pain than they used to see, uh, say 15 years ago. Uh, last but not the least, but what do you, what advice will you be giving for people who have already developed a heart disease? So uh, obviously one aspect which is what we call as primary prevention is to prevent these non-communicable disease. That means that you have to prevent yourself from becoming obese. That will result in possibility of being not hypertensive. That also will result in possibility of not becoming diabetic early. And because these diseases, if they come earlier in life, your possibility of becoming a heart patient is very likely in the early life. So, you know, change in lifestyle would be, of course, to change your dietary habits, to eat a certain kind of food at a certain time. And I would suggest you should eat fixed time. You should not eat in between the food. And I, one should completely remove sugar from his diets. And I think it's very, very important message which I will convey, the, convey to you. When you do not become obese and you control your dietary habits, you also don't get hypertensive. Although your parents may be hypertensive, you're already prone to it, but then you can prevent it. Now, what about somebody who has already become a heart patient? It's very, very important that they also follow the same uh, uh, lifestyle modification and more so than somebody who has not developed a heart disease. So they will also require to change their dietary habits, become physically fit, achieve ideal body weight, change their dietary habits and achieve uh, a possibility of not allowing this disease to progress further. So if you have suppose become, you've suffered a heart attack at 50 years of age and the next possibility of heart attack if you continue the same lifestyle was five years, you have to postpone it to 15 years and 20 years because somebody who's become a patient will have to prevent a second event, a second disease or second possibility of causing an effect of this disease on his body in the future. And so I would suggest that they should be examined for what are their risk factors, whether their cholesterol is normal or not, what is the, what is the, uh, the status of their diabetes, whether they have sugars are controlled or not, whether their blood pressure is controlled or not. So they have to prevent the risk factors, which are we call as the risk factor for coronary artery disease. And along with that, they have to achieve ideal weight. That's the most important thing that they have to reach. And I tell my patients that they should, if you ask somebody, what was your weight when you got married, especially a lady? And I ask them, can you fit into your blouse which you wore at the time of your marriage? And most of them will say no. So I would say that you achieve that weight 
which is your weight around 25 years of age. But if you're obese at that time also, that of course will also lead to a problem. But most of the people have to achieve the weight that they were when they just stopped growing this way and they grew this way. And that is the problem. So when people stop growing, which is about 16 to 18 years of age, they don't go tall, they go this way. And I think that should be achieved. Along with that, of course, a regular visit to a doctor, uh, a regular examination of your heart condition, your ECG, your echocardiogram, and of course your lipids, and effective efforts to control all these things so that you don't get future disease. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for all the input about lifestyle and the need for lifestyle modification in the current scenario. There was a lot of information about lifestyle modification and value of stress in the current scenario and the need to prevent non-communicable diseases. That was well formulated and well put in, sir. Thank you for the information thank you. Thank you. and thank you for listening.